Instead of smashing through, the package had crashed into the panel in a way that it had somewhat sealed the breach, keeping the pane from fully shattering back when the ship still had pressure. Ten minutes. Rain, we're getting nervous over here. The pieces of what had happened on this ship started to fall into place, but Rain shook them off, not having the commodity of time to dwell on the crew's story. He pushed off and bumped against the view panel. New cracks formed. Fearful that it would float into space, he grasped for the package, his thick gloves sliding right off the securely wedged box. A twinkle in the distance caught Rain's eye. Through the pane, he watched more and more glimmers appear, as starlight reflected off the millions of space debris entangled in the asteroid's gravitational pull. Star swarms were basically space tsunamis on an orbital schedule. No one saw swarms up close like this. No one was that stupid. The griffin was about to become slivers in this swarm if it didn't get out ahead of it. Throttle, he began. You better be ready for jump speed by the time the counter hits zero. I'm ready to go now. You keep lollygagging and I might decide to leave you behind, old man. I knew I could count on you, he said dryly, tugging at the box. His fingers slipped, but he kept pulling. Well, that's an interesting place to put a valuable thingamajig. Rain glanced over his shoulder to see Six fly onto the bridge and grab an instrument panel to slow his speed, nearly dropping the armful of biome kits he held. Nine minutes. Are you on your way back? Rain motioned to Six. Get your sticky fingers over here. This thing's wedged in here tight. I need leverage. I can't operate my jets and hold on to it at the same time. Six gave a longing look at the biome kits in his arms before letting out a drawn-out sigh. He released his prizes, flew over, and wrapped his hands around the package. Ready, he said, with the biome kits floating around them. Did I mention how much I dislike star swarms? Watching one coming right at me isn't exactly reassuring. Twinkling reflections from the swarm's debris covered much of the view panel's width now. Then we'd better grab this and get out of here, Rain said. Wrapping an arm around Six, Rain used his free hand to control his propulsion system. As soon as the package moved, cracks filled the panel before it shattered, creating an opening from the bridge into space. Shards of panel floated around biome kits. Six scrambled and grabbed for a kit. Leave them, Rain ordered. Just one, he said as he tucked a biome kit on top of the package and began to strap them to his suit. Consider it my bonus for saving the day. Three minutes. Did you hear me, guys? Three minutes. Rain shot Six a harried glance before responding. What happened to four through eight? I may have forgotten to take into account the Star Swarm's leading buffer impact on our acceleration. Don't mess around, guys. I'm not joking on this. Get back here now. Rain's mind rushed through options. He grabbed onto Six. We'll go faster using our propulsion tanks together. He pulled out a carabiner and hooked their suits together. You hold the package. I'll run both our jets. Faster is good. They kicked off from the bridge and flew through the shattered pane and out into space. Clear plastic pieces from the view panel scraped against their helmets. With Six clutching their payday and Rain holding on to him, Rain shot alternating full bursts from their suits to propel forward. Unfortunately, even with both at max output, their civilian-grade pressure suits were designed for slow, safe travel through space. As they moved through the blackness between the dead ship and the griffin, the star swarm closed the distance in a terrifyingly deadly sort of way, like a huge, sparkling chimera coming to swallow them. Two minutes. I'm running through the pre-jump protocols now. We're on our way, Rain said, trying to sound like his heart wasn't pounding out of his chest. He wished their suits to go faster, but wishing didn't seem to help. Every second was too slow as the distance between them and the star swarm disappeared faster than the distance between them and the griffin that floated like a Rylon angel waiting for them. Sixty seconds. Can't these things go any big and faster? Six complained. Rain racked his brain for ideas, but nothing would get them back to the ship in time. As they moved through space, his muscles shook with adrenaline and fear. We're at bingo. The Griffin's flux whisper engine roared to life. A second later, the airlock door began to close.